Hello guys! Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's vlog, the topic is about immigration. Isishare ko po sa inyo yung mga dahilan kung bakit in-offload po ng immigration officer yung mga gantong pasahero. And kung ikaw ay isa sa mga nabanggit ko, huwag niyo na pong ituloy. Kasi magsasayang lang po kayo ng plane ticket at ng effort at the end po, offloaded po kayo. And sana itong video na to mag-serve din as warning para po sa mga Filipino na itutuloy pa rin. And nakadepende po sa mga salitang bahala na sana mabait yung immigration officer na matapat sa akin. And based sa horoscope ko, swerte ako today. So, kahit marami akong missing documents, go pa rin ako. Guys, immigration in the Philippines are unpredictable. And isa po ang Pilipinas sa may pinakamahigpit na immigration. Yes po, totoo po yan. Only in the Philippines po na ang immigration na naghahanap ng sangkatutak na documents. Yung iba po ay ina-isolate pa sa one-on-one interview and hanggang po sa hindi sila umiyak, hindi sila maiwan ng aeroplano, hindi sila titigilan ng immigration. Ang dami pong nag-share sa akin ng mga offloading scenario, isashare ko po sa inyo yung iba. Give you an idea para if you have the same case, wag nyo na rin ituloy kasi ma-offload din po kayo. Ano nga ba guys, ang dahilan talaga kung bakit ino-offload kayo ng immigration. So guys, itong tatlo na to, tatandaan nyo to, unemployed, no savings, no sponsor, automatic offloaded po yan. So, kung isa ka dyan, magto-tourist ka, under ka ng ano na to, ng tatlo na to, huwag mo nang itutuloy. Offloaded ka. Bakit guys, ang red flag dyan is your financial capability. So, paano mo maa-afford mag-tourist kung wala ka man lang savings, wala kang source of income, and walang ibang taong mag-shoulder ng expenses mo. So, ano yun guys? Anong gagawin mo sa ibang bansa? So, napaka-red flag. So, ako as immigration din, isipin ko, your purpose is not as a tourist. So, maybe doon may kausap ka na, may magbibigay sa'yo ng trabaho, yung visa mo as tourist, i-convert as working visa like that, which is prohibited by law. So, sabi ko, guys, pag antong mga purpose of travel as a tourism, isa po sa mandatory requirements ng immigration natin, is at least you have savings. If you don't have any savings or you are unemployed, at least meron po kayong sponsor. And to be safe, guys, if you are unemployed, no savings, please look for someone who will going to cater the cost of your expenses by having an sponsor. And si sponsor is magbibigay po sa inyo ng affidavit of support and guarantee and invitation letter. So, but traveling without affidavit of support and guarantee and you are unemployed, no savings, automatic po. Offloaded po yan guys and ang pangalawa naman na scenario is like this so nasa immigration counter ka na tinanong ka ng immigration are you employed? sabihin mong yes and the follow up question from the immigration is what kind of job do you have and how much is your salary and kapag sinabi mo I am earning 30,000 plus in a month And hinanapan ka ng immigration ng any proof na talaga nagsasahod ka ng 13,000 per month. And wala kang maipakita. Ni screenshot of any um, transfer, wala ka. Ni bank statement, wala ka din. Or bank certificate, wala ka din. Ni GCash, wala ka din. And me as an immigration, you are earning like this kind of money but you don't have any bank account you don't have any proof to be shown to me that you are employed or you are earning like this but then zero record no documents at all and guys automatic 
offloaded ka. So, like this. Ganyan po ang isa sa nangyari sa isa pong na-offload. 30,000 pesos daw yung kanyang sahod, but then wala siyang may provide na bank statement and certificate which is as a proof na financially stable siya. Just with the word that I am earning 30,000 pesos per month, in-upload po siya ng immigration. Sa pangalawa guys is yung mga pasahero po na may active working visa but wala pong overseas employment certificate. Ayan, but mostly nangyayari lang po to sa mga Filipino na umalis na tourist visa, hindi dumaan ng OWA, ng POEA, and with the tourist visa, naghanap ng trabaho sa ibang bansa, na-convert yung tourist visa as working visa, pero no record po sa OWA or sa POEA, kaya hindi sila mabigyan ng overseas employment certificate. And umuwi ng Pilipinas para magbakasyon sa pabalik na ng ibang bansa, Aba, may active working visa. Hinanapan ng immigration. Meron ka bang overseas employment certificate? Kasi guys, yung, employment, yung overseas employment certificate, isa po ito sa patunay na ikaw ay isang OFW or nagtatrabaho sa ibang bansa. And kung ikaw ay may active working visa sa ibang bansa, so dapat meron ka nito kasi nagtatrabaho ka doon as a Filipino. So, wala kang may pakita. And pagtingin pala ng immigration sa monitor, ah, umalis ka ng Pilipinas na tourist, hindi ka bumalik as what you promised. You look for work and now you have working visa with no overseas employment certificate of loaded ka dai. Yes po. Yung mga wala pong may pakitang overseas employment certificate na mga OFW, hindi na po sila nakakabalik pa ng ibang bansa hanggang wala po nito. So, kung ikaw ay walang overseas employment certificate, huwag ka pong magbabakasyon sa Pilipinas hanggang hindi po expired ang inyong working visa kasi hindi ka na makakabalik. And ang pangatlong dahilan guys, meron ka ng offloading history. Na-offload ka na one time, two times, and then susubukan mo ulit. So, bibigyan ko kayo ng example. Ayan, si passenger number one, gusto niyang pumunta ng India and wala siyang financial capability. So, hinanapan siya ng immigration ng sponsor. Pero wala siyang maipakita. Or meron nga siyang sponsor, wala siyang affidavit of support and guarantee. So, ngayon in-offload siya ng immigration. Sinabi ng immigration, please comply your affidavit of support and guarantee. So, na-offload si passenger 1 papuntang India. And susubukan ulit ni passenger 1 pumuntang ng India na wala pa rin affidavit of support and guarantee. Guys, offloaded ka ulit. So, yung mga may offloaded um, history po, nakarecord po yan sa immigration. Yung dahilan ng pagkaka-offload ninyo and kung ano po yung documents na missing kung bakit kanila in-offload. So, for the second try, the same um, country of destination, ganun at ganun pa rin ang hahanapin sa inyo ng immigration. Kung wala kang affidavit of support before, dapat for the second try, meron ka na po. Kung before, wala kang may pakitang birth certificate, sa dapat but sa second try, meron ka na para payagan ka na pong umalis. Well naman guys, sa immigration, once naman na nakumply mo yung missing documents, papayagan ka rin nila guys na umalis ng bansa. Basta makumply mo. Advice ko sa inyo guys, hanggang hindi nyo hawak yung missing documents na inahanap ng immigration sa inyo, don't try to travel again. Mag-risk na naman kayo at the end of loaded po ulit. And ang pang-apat guys is yung mga tinatawag natin na 2 to 3 days tourist trip. So, bakit yan guys ino-offload ng immigration? Lalo na yung mga destination na napakalayo na may mga mahaba pang layover and mag 2 days ka lang doon, 3 days as a tourist 
questionable yan, guys. Ano yun? Paglapag mo ng airport, sasakay ka ulit ng aeroplano, pabalik ng Pilipinas. So, asan yung sense of being a tourist? Hindi ka man lang nagbigay ng allowance para makapag-explore ka. Kung talagang tourist ka. At ikaw ay mga less than 24 hours lang sa bansa na yun, babalik ka na ulit ng Pilipinas. Yung immigration, may hidden transaction ka with someone na ganto lang and after that, kailangan mong bumalik ng Pilipinas. Kaya yung mga ganto guys, is ino-offload siya ng immigration kasi hindi malinaw ang purpose of travel. And yung mga naka 2 days trip guys, lalo na yung mapapuntang Singapore, Thailand. Guys, yung mapapunta ng Thailand, ng mga 2 days trip, and pagdating nyo sa immigration counter, ay isang tingin pa lang ng immigration, naka business attire, just ko, offloaded ka. Bakit guys? Common sense na, na parang pupunta ka ng Thailand for 2 days, mag ka ng job interview. Paglapag mo pa lang ng airport, diretso ka na kung saan ka uh, mag apply ng trabaho for interview. And then, after that, kasi ayaw mo ng masyadong expenses sa ibang bansa, babalik ka agad ng Pilipinas. So, ayan guys. Iwasan natin yung mga gantong mga questionable na mga number of days ng travel natin. Kung hindi naman guys, sobrang ikli ng inyong travel date, sobrang haba naman guys as a tourist. So, may mga pumupunta po ng Singapore na hanggang one month po sila doon sa Singapore. And unemployed, no savings. Red flag, no financial capability. Pangalawang red flag, maghahanap to ng trabaho, hindi na to babalik ng Pilipinas. Pang pangatlong red flag, meron tong sponsor pero walang affidavit of support and guarantee. Offloaded ka. Kasi guys, kapag tourist, ang hinahanap talaga ng immigration chaan is yung inyong funds and Um, proof of ties to the Philippines. Ano ba? Unemployed ka ba? May properties ka ba? May mga anak ka ba? Na talagang within this um, number of stay, may bala ka pang bumalik ng Pilipinas. Ayan. Kasi ang laging isip ng immigration ay hindi na ito babalik. Very important na kahit anong proof of ties nyo guys, mag kayo. If you have um, children, so you can bring birth certificate of your children. If you have properties, yung mga title, ayan, um, deed of sale. So, you don't need to bring now the original. So, just um, photocopy and ipa-certify. True copy nyo po, yung parang may notaryo siya ng lawyer na talagang ikaw ay talaga may property na ganon. Kasi kapag original naman nga, guys, is napaka-risky, baka mawala sa ibang bansa. Common to sa mga na-offload is yung kanilang sponsor is not related. Yung sponsor po nila is not related by blood and not related by marriage. Yung sinasabi po ng immigration na first to fourth degree of consanguinity or affinity. Kung sanguinity guys is by blood, connected by blood, isa ang dugo na dumadaloy sa inyo, and yung affinity naman guys is by marriage. And yung iba po na um, traveler, ang kanilang mga sponsor po is as a friend or as a family friend or yung iba naman po is yung co-worker lang po, which is the immigration doesn't accept. Yung iba nakakalusot, so well, I'm happy for them, but mostly hindi po nakakalusot. Hindi po strong yung proof of um, ties nila doon sa kanilang sponsor. Kasi guys, napakahirap na po magtiwala sa gantong sponsor na ang inyong relationship is classified lang as a friend or family friend na wala man lang pong connection by blood or by marriage. Lalo na yung mga sinasabi natin as a friend na a fam and first meeting abroad and si a fam na po ang sponsor as a friend. Guys, mostly in offload ng immigration. So, kung as a friend lang naman si a fam, 
to be safe, gawin nyo na as girlfriend or boyfriend. Kasi pag girlfriend or boyfriend, may exemption pa yan sa immigration. Kasi you are not um, related by blood, you are not related by marriage, but there are something um, special to you, to both of you. You are in a relationship. But just with a friend or like that, kung na question po ng immigration, so iwasan po natin. Number seven, guys, is yung mga sponsored by spouse, but walang may pakitang marriage certificate. So yung si spouse, unemployed, magte-travel siya papuntang ibang bansa, walang source of income, kapag tinanong ng immigration, what is your source of income, sasabihin, unemployed pa ako, or housewife, and I have a sponsor, my husband, my wife, humingi sa immigration ng katibay na talagang asawa niya, yung sponsor niya, walang maipakitang marriage certificate. And dito na po, ino-offload din po yan ng immigration. Kasi without marriage certificate, hindi mo mapapatunayan ang inyong relation sa sponsor po ninyo. And kapag hindi naman po um, husband, um, relatives, ayan. So kapag wala din po kayong may pakitang birth certificate, ma-offload din po kayo guys walang proof of connectedness sa inyong pagkatao kung talagang magkapatid kayo eh, wal wala kayong birth certificate just by name guys hindi po yan makoconnect ng immigration and like na lang makita nila na pareho ang tatay ninyo pareho ang nanay ninyo ang lola ninyo by means of birth certificate you are traveling as a minor pero wala kang um, DSWD clearance. So guys, ang minor po kapag nagte-travel and walang kasamang biological parents, dapat po may DSWD clearance po yan. And ang susunod is yung passport mo ninyo. It's either pa-expired na or it's either may erasure po sa any pages of your passport. Yung ibang passport po, may nakita kong passport sa video sa TikTok na inaamag po. Hindi na po yan pwede. And yung mga passport po na nabasa ng baha. Guys, sa Pilipinas, laging binabaha. Guys, pagdating din po sa ibang bansa, mas high-tech po yung kanilang immigration doon. Yung mga um, gate po doon is um, scan by scan na lang ng passport. And kung passport nyo guys is medyo gaya ng binanggit ko, inaamag nabasa, may mga butas hindi po yan doon guys tatanggapin ang kanilang scanner so hindi ka rin makakahabol sa inyong mga connecting flight. That is for today's vlog if you have other inquiries guys about um, visa application immigration documentation kindly email me in this email address or follow my facebook page and guys, thank you so much and see you in my next vlog.